Hello, my name is Andrew Lomakin and I'm a program manager in Microsoft Sentinel product team. And today I'm going to talk about a solution which is currently in preview and it is continuous threat monitoring for SAP. Continuous threat monitoring for SAP solution consists of two major components. A data connector in the form of a Docker container that you deploy on-prem in the cloud um, and other content pack which is available through the content hub in Microsoft Sentinel. Today, we're going to look how to deploy the content uh, from the content hub and what value it delivers to you as a SOC analyst. For this demo, I'm going to start with a blank Microsoft Sentinel workspace and let's navigate into the content hub. Content Hub is a repository of solutions provided by Microsoft and other third parties that allow you to get more value out of Microsoft Sentinel. To deploy continuous threat monitoring for SAP solution, locate it in the Content Hub list, click on it. This allows you to review the description of the solution as well as uh, oversee what kind of content will be deployed. As you can see, there's a number of analytic rules, parsers, watch lists, and a number of workbooks. Once reviewed, hit install, review the information available, and click create. Select a subscription and a resource group, as well as the log analytics workspace to which you will be deploying the solution. Then click next, select through workbooks, review the list of workbooks that are going to be added. You can change the name of the workbooks if you like. Review the list of analytic rules, watch list, then hit review and create. And then finally, hit create. So once the deployment completes, we can navigate back to our Sentinel workspace and verify that everything was deployed successfully. Let's first check out the analytic rules. We'll see here a list of rules that are prefixed with SAP. And that essentially means that the solution deployment has succeeded. Uh, we see that rules are created in disabled state. So the first thing we'll need to do is to select them all and enable the analytic rules. That essentially activates the, the logic, the monitoring of the, the logs that are coming in into the Sentinel workspace. Uh, next, uh, let's review what logs are available. And the number of logs are collected by an SAP system. You'll see them in the custom logs. Um, some of the ones uh, to point out separately is the audit log. That includes information about the activities carried out by the users in your uh, in your environment. As you can see, there's a bunch of a uh, bunch of events that are recorded. Um, there is uh, data uh, regarding the user uh, SAP user master data that is included in tables such as USR01, USR02, etc. Um, and the analytic rules that are added by the solution, utilize this data uh, to raise uh, incidents and alerts. So let's next review what analytic rules, um, what analytic rules evaluate. So let's navigate to one of the analytic rules and review what it does in, uh, in greater detail. So you can see the rules are grouped by severity. So some of the examples of a high severity rules include something like a change in the sensitive privileged user and in order for us to understand what uh, to consider privileged user, we need to consult the logic of the actual query. So what you can see in here is the KQL uh, query, which is the foundation for all uh, Sentinel analytics. And uh, what, uh, what this rule does, it filters out events that have a specific uh, audit class but then it only fires an alert if that uh, change in the audit log did uh, happen to a privileged user. And now we need to understand what a privileged user is and why would a user be considered uh, privileged. Um, in the solution, um, in the continuous um, threat monitoring for SAP solution, uh, there is a custom function called SAP users get privileged. Uh, which 
retrieves everything that is considered a privileged user. And the way it does that is by reviewing uh, the watch lists. And the watch list is a way you can customize the activity, um, you can customize the behavior of, uh, of those functions. For example, you can define uh, what uh, authorizations are considered to be critical. Uh, what ABAP programs that user run can, are considered uh, sensitive, what transactions are considered sensitive, what roles are considered sensitive, what users are explicitly considered uh, to be privileged. Now, if we go back to the rule logic, there was a function that says get privileged user, and the way it works, it monitors all the users that have been assigned uh, to a role that is considered sensitive, and you can actually uh, look uh, into the contents of this watch list. There is some sample data in here. Uh, so if a user uh, has been granted uh, a role uh, SAP BC basis admin, uh, the user will be considered privileged. Right? And if, you, if the, in the organization there are other uh, roles that are considered privileged, just hit add, uh, add new, write down the role name, and all users that have been uh, assigned to this role will be considered as privileged uh, by the Microsoft Sentinel. So now we've looked at the logs, uh, we've looked at the analytic rules that parse those logs and watch lists that allows us to customize the behavior of the analytic rules. Now let's go and investigate what happens when there is some suspicious activity in our SAP system. For that, let's navigate into the incidents page. And there we can see all the incidents that were raised uh, in the selected time frame, which currently is selected to be 24 hours. So as you can see, there's been a number of uh, incidents raised on this particular environment. And what we want to investigate is what kind of data can we see uh, for an incident. So for this particular case, we're investigating a change in a sensitive privileged user. Uh, essentially, there's been a modification of a, a user that has been considered as privileged, and we already discussed how that is figured out. So with the incident, we get the usual uh, Microsoft Sentinel incident handling capability, like assign an owner to the incident, change the incident status, and change the incident severity, as well as all the associated uh, entities um, uh, that are um, fired by the analytic rule. So in this particular case, we can see that there's been a number of um, entities identified. So one of them is a user uh, and, a, and a system. So for example, in this particular case, it appears that this user uh, was changed. Uh, the, author, uh, the, the properties of this user was changed and we know in what system that was done. So we can start our investigation uh, and go in and look deeper on the, actual, um, on the actual system and the activities of that particular user. We obviously can see the associated uh, alerts, uh, alerts that are associated to that incident, uh, comments of other engineers working on that incident. We can click on the investigation button to see a graph of all the related uh, activities, such as um, has there been any other incidents associated with a given user or a given system. And that allows us to drill in deeper into the incident and identify um, the root cause uh, or the attack vector. Microsoft Sentinel is great not only because it can detect a large amount of threats, uh, but also because we can automate response to these threats. Let's review that on the example of the following analytic rule, which we've touched uh, just a moment ago. So we've got an incident, uh, a change in a sensitive privileged user has happened, and we want to trigger um, an automated remediation of uh, such incident. For example, uh, we want to verify with the SOC analyst that uh, this indeed is an unexpected uh, behavior, and we want to react to that. We can do that. Uh, we'll navigate into the automation uh, blade, and we've got uh, the ability to write playbooks. Let's review uh, a sample playbook. In this playbook, we do a number of actions. When an incident uh, is triggered, we post an adaptive card to a Teams channel and we wait for the analyst response. So it's not a fully automated uh, operation, but we give the human the ability to analyze the details of the incident and 
decide what to do next. Then, if the response uh, to that adaptive card is that, yeah, the activity is definitely not expected, and the response of the analyst is, yeah, let's lock the target user account, we can then go back to SAP, connect to SAP instance, and then call uh, a method that would lock uh, the target user account. Let's see that in action. A SOC analyst gets an alert in a Teams channel from a bot providing details of an incident and asking for the two possible actions, whether this is an expected activity and this activity should be approved or a target user should be locked because this is something that is suspicious. And before we proceed with the investigation, let's first mitigate the risks and lock the target user out. Now let's verify that currently in the SAP system, the user is still not locked. We know the name of the user, so we can just log in to our SAP system and check if the user is currently locked. And as we can see, the user lock state is not locked. We can now proceed and respond to our Teams card saying, yeah, this is a suspicious activity. Let's lock the target user account. Now the logic app that was triggered by the incident will continue to run and it will connect to the SAP system and it will perform the lock. We now go back to our SAP system and re-verify if the user is locked or not. And right now we see that the user has been locked. So this is not only a detection of a suspicious activity from SAP system, but this is also remediation or mitigation of a certain risk within the SAP system, all from a single Microsoft Sentinel management console. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks very much for watching. See you later.